Are we good now? Can you hear me? Anyone hear me? Like in the background as well? Okay. Well, uh, welcome everyone. Um, I would like to say thank you for your attention and your time. Uh, I'm Leandro, uh, and today I want to present you uh, not as much of a talk as other, other, other talks that we have today, but rather more like a testimonial or like a tale, right? Uh, about our experience with Nick, with Nick's on at, at the work, right? So we've been using Nix uh, as a part of uh, our satellite development. So we at uh, Aerotech develop uh, satellite payloads. Uh, and these payloads, uh, their focus is to monitor the Earth from space, right? So basically, the, the idea here is that this just uh, this basically blob, the shoe size box that we get to space, right? And then just we never had access to it again. So you use it to like take pictures like this, for example. Now you may wonder what the fuck is that on the left, right, or the right in your case, right? That's actually Paris. Just that, yeah. It was quite cloudy, so I'm sorry you, I couldn't get any clearer pictures from our satellite, but on the right you can see another example that I found uh, within our archives. Uh, I'm not going to even try to pronounce that city, uh, but yeah. So, but the thing is, this is about our first one payload. Our first one payload was pretty much done by the time I, I joined the company, right? So that's sort of where I come in, right? Uh, joined the company about a year ago, and they had this sort of, let's call it a well-intentioned uh, script to put, like, to build a Debian uh, system where you just uh, put everything together into a make file and you just get some sort of Debian image. But it wasn't really like, it really expandable, right? It's just uh, you get only a very basic system which requires a lot of manual processing. You got every time you have to update the satellite, you have to manually connect to it, like send the shell script or set the packages, ensure that the, uh, everything works, and you cannot fuck up basically. Because uh, if you can't fuck up an update in space, you are pretty much screwed. So here is what I. Uh, we started to get start to ambition. Uh, we, we we needed something that it allows us to have more confidence on our on our own update process and our own software that are going to push push into space. So it just this is just our first idea, right? Just okay. What is the most basic concept that we need to to get from this? Is just develop things have them somehow get built into an image that we can trust is reproducible, then we can test it on ground first, and then we, we can create an exact copy on space. But we cannot be sending like an entire image on space each time. So we had to find some way to make, it, make that work into uh, more reliable, but also small, uh, something that can be done in small chunks. So here is where the idea of Nix comes into the picture, right? So we wanted to go, we started to go down that rabbit hole of Nix. Just, okay, yes, we can start using Nix, but why not, why not like just Nix, Nix OS for like, it's, if you're going to use Nixon space, just might, might as well, right? And then, like, we were also like starting to consider flakes as well. Uh, and this is the, the thing uh, that, that very rough plan started to get into a more, a more and more Nix centered uh, approach. And uh, actually, that's like basically how I got uh, hired actually, because it wasn't my idea, it was, it was the senior developer's idea. So like he heard about this Nix thing, and I, in the interview, like, you know, as you casually do, it's just like, oh, hello, I'm Leandro. Have you heard about like, our Laura Savior Nix? 
and that landed the job interview for some reason. So uh, uh, we started like putting it into place, and we, I started like actually developing the whole thing around Nix. Uh, Call me crazy, you would write definitely, but uh, I wanted to show you just like how every single piece of our, of my diagram quickly became like infected with Nix space pretty much. So, um, yes, so the, the process started like a developer, they started to use like Nix on their own computers, they started to package uh, stuff with flakes, with, uh, then they can proceed to read their own images. These images themselves are um, flakes, but, but they custom stuff that I've had to hack around because, well, they're running on Jetson Nanos, no, not Nanos, Jetson Saviors, which are pretty much uh, non-supported. So I had to hack around the, like the kernel and make it work. But then the, they are built on a, um, it's called a um, dedicated builder. So one of the features that Nix provides you is just, I'm not going to build it on my computer, I can build it on a dedicated server or like machine. In our case, it's just like Raspberry Pi, but you can delegate that into another system. And the great idea about that is that Jetsons are ARM devices. So you don't have to worry about now any cross compiling or having to SSH into a machine and that is ARM based so that you can have a native binary or anything just Transparently, just Nix build on your computer and just it, if it's configured properly, it just knows to go to that server and just get everything built. Um, then after that, the whole process is done, you can just trigger the pipeline. Just again, uh, that pipeline is going to be using Nix. It's using, going to use this, this, the same processes as well. Uh, so you don't even need to rebuild it again because it's, already cached it into your uh, bit server, but then we're also going to cache it as well, so we can share it like between different build servers. Uh, the pipeline knows like which build server was used, so that uh, like because we have a couple of them, but it will know that we will know to find the correct build server so that it doesn't have to rebuild again, and then put it into the cache so that all build servers have access to it, and then uh, it will automatically take that, uh, that binary and just, not a binary, that image, uh, all its updates and just like send the corresponding like Nix store packages to a ground satellite replica, which is basically just a Jetson Nano with some hardware around it that's used for testing purposes. And that allows us to just do some proper testing, uh, like a lot of manual processes like go usually into testing, but uh, that allows us to ensure that we can trust our software, like it boots, it doesn't break, not just like it doesn't break our software, but like just uh, like all our services are working. Uh, the hardware itself works as expected because we have like custom hardware, so it requires custom uh, kernel modules and all of, all of that sort of thing. And once we have that, uh, trust, uh, that trust on the test software that we tested, we can just straight up push it to space through the same pipeline. This is a, a, like a dotted line because this is expecting a, a manual input, it has to be manually be approved. Uh, and then we can just push it straight to space. Um, and we know that it's going to be an exact copy of what we had on ground and not have to worry about any statefulness or anything. Just uh, gets immediately pushed uh, and starts running again, not, not worries over there. Uh, and as I've said before, everything in that is like using Nix in the background, and uh, except for the developers, at least yet I haven't found a way to like get the developers running on the on Nix itself. Uh, but yeah, one of the many key points that uh, I wanted to like highlight specifically, like reproducibility, as I said, it is a very important topic 
for a testing on ground, we need to be able to have a, as identical as possible uh, on ground compared to space. Um, remote builders, uh, those, as I said, we need to we need to have ARM binaries and not uh, we don't have ARM computers ourselves that so that allows us to to transpile it in, th in things. Uh, the cache splits up. Uh, we have a lot of really big stuff that we need to build that can take quite a while and that cache uh, allows, us, allows us to s uh, save a lot of time, uh, specifically because we also have like an ARM7 processor and as, I don't know if you've ever tried to build ARM7 stuff, but pretty much seems, tries to build a lot of stuff from source. Uh, so that can save up days of building time. Uh, then the ability to just package it into closures and being able to send it to like uh, another system to, so you can share stuff with, within systems that this allows us to the custom upload process because uh, connection within a satellite and ground is not stable, it's not trustworthy. So you have to like uh, split it up into small pieces and slowly trickle it over in space until you can get the whole thing over. Uh, and then you have to put it all together back in space uh, and just continue as if like, you just use for a Nix copy closure. Uh, and then the generations is also something that we find really useful because no matter how much you test stuff, you, uh, there is a very high probability that something at some point is going to be, go wrong. And as I said, you cannot have any problems in space, right? So the thing is that you need, to, it gives you that confidence that even if I fail at testing something on ground, even if I uh, accidentally uh, push something that I shouldn't have or whatever, I can always go back and just roll back the configuration and uh, not have to worry about it too much. Uh, and it also, uh, that generation thing is, I don't have to have two copies in space of the same image, for example. It's just have a single image with all uh, the paths in the store. And then the, you just pretty much just switch to whichever path you're pointing to. And that's uh, just changing the generation. So it saves us also a lot in like space storage. Uh, that it's really valuable in space. So honestly, uh, between like how nervous I am because if this is my first talk, I, I went a little bit too fast, I think. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, I want to open up for questions. Like I give you some example questions here, but you can ask me about anything. Okay. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> okay. So are there any questions? My apologies for the ringing, I'm trying to figure it out. But are there questions? No? No questions? No hands? Am I missing some? Ah, there we go. Um, so if there's a, a problem, you mentioned generations. Um, do you like SSH to the machine and then just like pick the other generation? Is there anything to help? If you completely bust it and you need to like reboot the system, uh, can you go into that, or would that be too much detail? Uh, no, no, that's that's fine. So basically, there is uh, beyond like there is an automated process. If it completely fails to boot up, that's going to be automatically rolled back. But if it boots up, but something goes wrong, you don't like have quite of an. It's not an SSH session per se. It's more like a a bus like connected to a serial console that's using some like, some weird proprietary stuff to connect to ground and we we just get access to that so it's a it's a but no steps basically any other questions Just more of a practical curiosity. How did you, how did you um, uninstall Debian on the satellite and then get Nixos running? 
Oh, maybe I wasn't clear about that. This is our next uh, payload that we're going to be deploying. So from, uh, we deployed our first uh, satellite, right? Forest one, but then from Forest two on, we're planning to use Nix on it. So I may be lying a little bit with the title because it's not yet on space. It's going to be in a couple of months, but uh, yes. Uh, no, we're not updating stuff, our Debian stuff in space that, that we don't touch. We do have time for more, so if there's questions, please raise your hand and I'll come. No? Okay, then one more round of applause, please. Thank you. <laughs> Just wanted to mention, yeah, uh, thanks again for your time, but we're hiring just in, if, you, if you're curious about it, you can check on that website or you can ask me around. I will probably be at the uh, hiring happy hour. So feel, feel free also to come around and thank you. <laughs>